Everybody worship the king of the universe this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name. Good morning, Hope. Thank you all so much for coming and joining us here today, and thank you to everybody that's joining us online as well. We have a couple of quick announcements. The third annual Hearts Being Healed Conference is Saturday, October 1st. The cost is $20 and will include lunch if you register by September 25th, so be sure to sign up and register. There's information on the ministry table or see Carol Hansford. A new semester of growth groups has started. It is not too late to join one if you haven't already, so find one that fits your schedule. There's information about them on the ministry table. Rock the Ridge 16 is upon us. 
It will be held at Terry Ash Park on September 10th, which is next Saturday. This time we're raising money to benefit the Paradise High School Chorus as they travel to join 15 other choruses to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. We can't do this without you, Hope, so make sure you take the opportunity to sign up to help on the ministry tables. At this time, we're going to have a short meet and greet, so find three people you don't know and ask what encourages you. Should we start it now? <laughs> I have an instant prayer. I have trouble I wish wasn't there. And I have asked a thousand ways that you would take my pain away. That you would take my pain away. trying to understand how to walk this weary land make straight the paths that crooked lie oh lord with what is being on mine oh lord with what is being on mine when my world is shaken broken, lost, and bruised. 
you would be mindful of us what do you see that's worth looking our way we are free in ways that we never should be we release from our grip of these chains
Seems like every time I try to make it right, it all comes down on me. Please say honestly, you won't give up on me. And I shall believe. And I shall believe. And I shall Oftentimes, life can leave us feeling like we're on a roller coaster. Sometimes we're up, and sometimes we're down. But we serve an encouraging God who seeks to fill us and leave us feeling full. And we see this when we look at Jesus. Teaching us to love, Jesus showed us that despite our sins, we can be saved. And as we take communion this morning as a family, we remember the body and the blood of our Savior who redeems us and leaves us encouraged. And because of the cross, we can daily be encouraged. The trumpets cry, the soldiers bleed out to heaven die. Better than a hallelujah sometime. We pour out our miseries, not just to Woman holding on for life, the dying man giving up the fight. I'm better than a hallelujah sometime. The tears of shame for what's been done, the silence when the words won't come. I'm better than a hallelujah sometime. We pour Just here.
Better than a hallelujah. Your love, oh Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness stretches to to the heavens and your faithfulness stretches to the sky to the sky. When your car is broken too, there's only one thing you want to do. Open your mouth and let it spew. But I am telling you, stay positive. When you 
baking a cake for your family. Your kids are hopped up on caffeine. Your fluffy cake is now kind of lean. Remember, don't be mean. Stay positive. Hey, Hope Church Second Service, you glad to be here today? Yeah. Hey, good to see all of you. Thanks for being here. You know, I could probably hook you up with that song uh, if you want to take it home and you can play it on your computer or uh, in your car, driving around. Stay positive. Thanks for being here. We've got about 30, uh, 34, 35 people at Joshua Fest this weekend, which is a great worship festival, Christian worship festival, and they're having an awesome time and going to come back all fired up. Let's give it up for the band for leading us. Thank you, guys. I, uh, I like to uh, not talk much about money on purpose because studies say that one of the reasons people don't go to church is they feel like they're always trying to get in their pocket. And uh, so I purposely don't, uh, usually every week. But I do, when there's a need, share with people because every time that happens, God, God comes through somehow. And uh, if you look at our bulletin, it, talks, it shows about uh, where our budget need is. That's a, that's a goal because sometimes the needs go more. You know, we've got growing ministries, and it's exciting, and it's not a problem. It's an awesome thing. Uh, but we've been down. We were down a couple months, and then last month went even farther down. So uh, with that in mind, we have this huge event coming up this Saturday with Rock the Ridge, which we purposely go in the hole. We know every time we do Rock the Ridge, we're, gonna go, we're not going to make money. We're going to lose money, and we're going to give money away. Whatever we raise goes to the cause, uh, which I, I don't know of many churches doing that. I, I'm not to be put down on other churches. I'm just proud of our church that we – give back to our community we're known christians are known by a lot of people in the world as issue oriented they think we're haters and one of the ways we show that we love is by giving and they see that god is about love and we have people that are part of hope now that we're curious why are you guys doing this and they came and we don't do it to try to just to try to get people we do it because god is good and giving is good amen, amen. and uh, we're going to this time we're going to give uh to the cause to help uh, some of our kids uh, from our community in the chorus, the high school chorus, to go to Pearl Harbor for the 75th anniversary and commemoration. And uh, I think that's so awesome that some of our kids from our town will be there. It's also a little side blessing. We didn't do it because of this, but there's a few Hope kids in that group that's going to be there. So that's really cool. And then there's the whole veteran side, the, the fact that we'll be thanking veterans, we'll be remembering veterans and people who um, gave their lives or risked their lives. We'll be honoring that time in our history. So there's a lot of good things about supporting this cause. If you're able to give more than usual, um, please do so if God puts that on your heart to help us. And I know God will provide. I'd like to say a prayer at this time. Father, I want to uh, thank you for all our blessings. I want to thank you that I get to be a part of a church that's outreach-oriented. We have no desire to be a church that just hides out in the walls of our building. We we are called to be the light of the world and to be a blessing to our community. So we ask you once again, as when we started this event, to bless us and take care of our needs. You've done it every time, and now as we get ready for our 16th one, Lord, I pray you're in the middle of it and you're glorified. Thank you for all our volunteers. And Lord, I pray for someone named Matt that doesn't live here, but uh, one of our members reached out to this week and shared the gospel with him. He's in need of of the grace of God, of your grace to know Jesus. And I pray that that seed that was planted will grow and blossom. I pray for any others that our church family is reaching out to and concerned about right now that needs to know your love and to be your sons and daughters. And we pray for fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm really excited about this message uh, because I think it's a huge need, and I believe it, it's, it's a way we make a positive impact, and it's a, it's a design that God has for us and one of the reasons uh, being an encourager is a challenge is we have uh, relationships that we deal with, and they're not always easy with human beings. Um, I read this uh, this week. A, a cash re a, a checker at a store was uh, checking a lady out and noticed that as he was ringing up the items uh, for her to purchase, she fumbled for her wallet, and he saw a remote control for a television in her purse and he said so do you always carry your tv remote in your purse 
And she said, no, but my husband refused to come shopping with me, and I figured this was the most evil thing I could do to him legally. (laughs) A a man walked into a pharmacy and wandered up and down the aisles, and the sales girl noticed that and said, sir, can I help you? And he answers that he's looking for a box of tampons for his wife. And so she showed him the correct aisle, and a few minutes later, the guy comes up, to the counter and he puts a huge bag of cotton balls and a ball of string on the counter. And she's confused, she says, sir, I thought you were looking for some tampons for your wife. And he answered, well, it's like this. Yesterday, I sent my wife to the store to get me a carton of cigarettes and she came home with a tin of tobacco and some rolling papers because it's so much cheaper. So I figured if I have to roll mine, she has to roll her. A husband, A husband read an article to his wife about how many words women use a day. 30,000 to man, 15,000. And the the wife replied, the reason has to be because we have to repeat everything to man. (laughs) And the husband turned to his wife and said, what? (laughs) Maybe you've heard of the silent treatment. Maybe you're good at the silent treatment. A man and his wife were having some problems at home. And we're giving each other the silent treatment. Suddenly, the man realized that the next day, he's got a real important flight for business. And he wanted to make sure he got up at 5. So he wanted to ask her to wake him up. But then, not wanting to be the first to break the silence and lose, he wrote it on a piece of paper where he knew she would see in the morning, please wake me up at 5 a.m. And he left it there for her. The next morning, he wakes up, and it's 9 a.m., and he missed his flight, and he's furious, and he's about to go see why his wife didn't wake him, and then he noticed by the bed a note on a paper that said, it's 5 a.m., wake up. (laughs) Men are not equipped. I don't think men are equipped for these kind of contests. One lady said, God may have created man before woman, but there's always a rough draft before the masterpiece. Well, would you agree that we live in a chronically negative world, that all around us there's voices of discouragement? Yeah, you can turn on the TV or you can listen to the news on the radio or whatever, or you go to work, you go to, you know, it's around us in this fallen world, uh, uh, voices of discouragement. Starts when we're kids and we go to, we go to school or we want to we get picked on a team and we don't get picked and then we feel like, well, I'm not good enough. And maybe we're not in the advanced class, so we feel like, well, I'm just average. And and then someone makes fun of us for being different, so we feel rejection. And uh, I think it's even more challenging in some ways with the the social media now. Imagine a 14-year-old who posts a picture and doesn't get very many likes on Instagram, and someone else has all these likes. And, you know, when I was young, I was just, you know, I could feel like uh, a loser, but now there's hard data that can prove it on, on social media, the facts, well, no one likes me, I'm not popular. Uh, then um, it, it happens as we grow up and we, we go to work and the project wasn't good enough or the boss isn't pleased or uh, at home our spouse picks us apart. My, my spouse doesn't pick me apart, but maybe yours does. Um, you, your in-laws tell you you're not raising your kids right, and your kids agree with your in-laws that you're not raising them right. Or you get some new pants, and someone says, are those new pants? And you go, yes. And they go, oh. And you're like, oh? Well, what does oh mean? Oh, they're nice? Or oh, ooh? Or, uh, and then you go on Facebook, and you see that person you know on their third vacation, and you haven't gotten one yet, or they're on a nice date. In a, in a fancy restaurant that you can't afford to go and been wanting to go, or you see a party with a bunch of your friends there and realize you weren't invited, you know? And you just feel kind of like, my life stinks, I'm, you know, no one cares. And you can get down, even on a normal day, there can be so many voices of discouragement. Well, here's the good news and exciting news, and I believe this with all my heart, God is calling every one of us to be encouragers. God is calling us to be the kind of people that build other people up. In a world where everyone's tearing people down, God calls his people to be the kind of people that build others up. And actually, I got excited about this, thinking about this week, this truth, that it's an incredibly spiritual thing to do, to 
building others up. Did you know that? We think of things like praying, which is good, of course, and, and Bible study, and going to church services and stuff. Those are spiritual activities. Did you know that encouraging people is a spiritual activity? In fact, I think it's one of the most spiritual things we can do is build others up and be an encourager. Here's why. Our God, if you're a note taker, our God is an encouraging God. Our God is an encouraging God. We're called to be his sons and daughters, reflect his nature. He's an encourager. We're called to be encouragers. Here's just one verse just as an example. In 2 Corinthians 7, 5 and 6, Paul's writing to the Corinthians. And he says, when we arrived in Macedonia, there was no rest for us. You ever feel that way? Like there's no rest. You just can't get any rest. There's no rest. Maybe you feel that way this morning. There's no rest. And then he says, we face conflict from every direction with battles on the outside and fear on the inside. Maybe you know what that's like. You feel conflict from different direction, every direction, everywhere you turn. Battles, conflict from the outside, and then you have fear on the inside. What's going to happen? Fear of uncertainty. Fear things won't work out. You're, you're discouraged. And I love the next two words. But God. Everybody say, but God. But God. You know, there's times in the Bible it'll say negative things, and then it'll say, but God. Like in Ephesians, it says, you were dead in your transgressions or your sins, but God made you alive in his kingdom. But God. That's the big difference maker. Well, look what he does. But God who what? Encourages those who are discouraged. That's what God does. God encourages those who are discouraged. And and and. And then it says, encourage us by the arrival of Titus. God, who encourages those who, who are discouraged, encourages us by the arrival of Titus. First of all, there's a lot of people who don't think you're doing church unless you're kicking somebody's butt. There's a lot of people who don't think, if, you, if you're too positive, you're not really preaching the gospel. And you need to be a meanie to really preach the truth. I believe actually being loving and positive is more challenging. I believe uh, it is stronger. I believe it is more depth. Anybody can be critical and negative and kick somebody's tail. Our God is a God who encourages those who are discouraged. And how does he do it here? By the arrival of a guy, a brother. It says he encouraged us by the arrival of Titus. Sometimes you've got to have a brother. You know, sometimes you've got to have a sister. Sometimes you get so encouraged by love from someone who cares about you unconditionally. And you know what? God is encouraging you through that person. That's what it says here. Paul saw Titus bringing encouragement as a gift from God. God works through people. Sometimes it's when you most need it. It can be a note. It can be someone can share something to you that makes so much difference, and you realize God cares about me, and uh, God sent someone. He cares so much. He sent someone to say just the right thing at just the right time. Um, this week, I, I uh, was going to go to Shore, uh, which is a homeless project here in the town that we're a part of. I'm on the board, and we have housed them be in the past, and then we switched the model because our director felt like we can do more good by allowing more to come to a day service where they can get showers and, and do wash and they can get uh, on computers and learn ways to find jobs and to find housing. And we're having some successes with that. And uh, so uh, Feather River Hospital wanted to give some gifts uh, to us, to Shore, and they asked if the board members, those who could, would be, be there uh, to welcome the hospital, Mucky Mucks, the big shot, uh, don't tell them I called them that, but uh, <laughs> to welcome them and thank them. And they brought some awesome stuff, a bunch of little bags with, with toiletries and stuff that people appreciate out there on the streets. Amen, Trevor? Uh, and so there's, a, there's boxes of all these little packets of stuff. And uh, then they had us board members take pictures with the, the CEO and VPs and different people. And so that was cool, you know. And But I'm feeling kind of down that day, My uh, a good friend of mine that, he was kind of the Dave Darby of my hometown. He was an incredible guitarist that when we were growing up at parties or hanging out, he always had a guitar, and he got better and better and better. Uh, became uh, known as the, uh, the blues man of Bakersfield. It, it, there's a lot of different genres of music in Bakersfield. They love music. And so he became, he made a mark, uh, but he became a Christian 
later on in life, and I heard uh, of him playing guitar in a church, a growing church in a tent, and uh, then I got a CD from him of, of some Christian songs he wrote and, and sang. It had an impact on me and helped encourage me to get the courage to take what I listened to in my car, the style of music, and do it at church. Because it's a gift from God. It brings glory to God. Why not use it at church if it's done to God's glory? So I got to meet him uh, later in life, and it was so cool seeing him playing in a church, and he was shocked that I became a pastor, of course. And he encouraged me uh, in my uh, ministry. Well, he died uh, this past week. They had a celebration at my hometown. So I went over to shore for this deal. I was just feeling down about that and some other things. And uh, Bob Irvine was there. And Bob is a great guy who does the, the green bags that we, we are a part of uh, for feeding people in need. And then also he has homes around here that uh, cares for people with special needs. And he's a friend of mine, and he's on the board. And we were standing there, and he goes, uh, Trevor's really doing good. And he's talking about Trevor, who works for him. Ter Trevor's mortified I'm talking about him in church. But, uh, <laughs> and then I go, do you know Larry? And he goes, yeah, Larry's a great guy. I go, well, Larry goes to Hope, too. He goes, I want to tell you a story. He said, uh, back when you guys were housing, part of the, the housing project was they would go to a different uh, church facility every night. He says, there was an interim uh, pastor at the church where I go, and I'm not going to say where he, 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 he goes to church, but that interim pastor had a lady who wanted to do something. She was calling it, trying to have a cool name, call it Radical Hospitality. And how can we have Radical Hospitality? And that pastor looked at her, and Bob told me, he said, you want to see Radical Hospitality? Go over and visit Hope Church. <laughs> Those people got it dialed in. They have got Radical Hospitality. And when I heard that, all the stuff that was, I was so encouraged. I was walking out to my car. You want to see radical hospitality? <laughs> Go see Hope Church where I preach at, you know. And, and I was so proud of our church and it's so exciting. It's amazing how encouraging words, you know, it means uh, to give courage. When you encourage, with courage is what that root word is. We can actually give people strength that comes from God and flows through us and encourages other people. And we can do it, uh, you can find encouragement from a text, uh, from a message, from a, a voicemail. You can find it uh, from, from a song. You can, sometimes God just works through different ways, and one of the ways he works is through people to bring encouragement. So here's three of the most spiritual things you and I can do to encourage. Number one, encourage others daily. Why encourage others daily? Because daily we hear voices of discouragement. Well, that really wasn't very good, what you did. Uh, you left the dishes out again. Well, or, or maybe you're asking your mate, why can't we afford this? And you, and you feel like, man, we just never seem to have enough. Uh, and then we have our own voice, our haunting internal voice that can say, no one appreciates what I do. I don't have, I don't have any more to give. There needs to be more of me to go around. I just can't get it all done. We can have these internal voices of discouragement. Uh, I'm just, I don't have what it takes. And that's why we need to be encouraged daily. And in Hebrews 3.13, the writer says, but encourage one another, what? Daily. daily, as long as it's called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We can get hardened if we're discouraged. We can get um, you know, full of regret and disappointment and anger. Our heart becomes hard. I have a personal rule that I started uh, when I went to seminary, and that is I say love you. I love you all the time. And I know people can say, well, you got to really mean it. Of course you got to mean it. And saying it makes you kind of hold you accountable. And loving is not a feeling. Biblical love is a choice. It's a decision. So even if I don't feel like it, I, I try to make myself say it all the time. You know why? At a time in my life when I felt so alone and I wanted, I found out I could have a new beginning and I could even work in the ministry for God. And I went to this devotional and this big burly guy from Montana was having this devotional and he walked out in the parking lot with me under, I still remember under the stars. I was brand new, scared at this school. I'm like, will I be able to remember all these memory verses after smoking so much pot? And I was just scared to death that I wouldn't fit or I couldn't make it. And uh, he says, I love you, man. Now, if you're from Taft in the oil fields and the man says, I love you, it makes you a little nervous, all right? But then deep down inside, I thought, yeah, 
I like that. I want to be loved. Everybody wants to be loved. And I made a commitment. I'm going to say, it's a personal rule. I'm going to say I love you. And I forget it sometimes. And I don't feel good when I forget it. But it feels good when I say it. And I mean it. And others say it too. And I'm not saying you got to do my rule. I'm saying think about ways where daily in your lifestyle. That's one of the things I love about our discussion groups. We get around the Bible with others and we pray for each other and we encourage each other in our daily lifestyles. You know, uh, every Sunday, first of all, let me just say this. I, I, some people say they don't get nervous when they do a public speech and, and um, I understand that as a speaker. If I'm going to talk about how to tie your shoes or something, I'm not as nervous. But when I preach, even though it's been over 30 years, I always get nervous. I have an incredible sense of responsibility because I'm act, I don't feel worthy. I'm not worthy, but I'm actually speaking for God, and I don't want to screw up. I hate to hear myself. I can't. It's hard for me to listen to myself, and uh, I make myself every now and then go online and listen to it so I can hear how I need to improve. Like, why do I keep saying, uh, 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 quit saying, uh, you know, and watch your language. And sometimes I hear myself, a few years back, well, I don't even believe that anymore, you know. So I feel this pressure. In fact, if you talk to me before I do a, a, a message, I, I don't visit very good. I'm, I'm so distracted. I, I know some guys, they can study all week, and then they just walk in and say, hey, and they're just, at, and then they get up and turn it on somehow. I can't do that. I study right up to the point. I'm still making changes right up to the point. If I preach something, I've preached a, a bunch before. I, didn't, I never preach it exactly the same. I don't want to be this canned guy. So I feel this pressure. And uh, people here are so kind to me. But one thing, every week I go home, I plop in my chair, and I take my phone, and I look at my email, and there it is. It's an email from Tom Kirchenton. And he says, huh, you must have been doing this a while, I guess. Not bad, you know. It's, or he'll say, that was a really good one. I really needed to hear that. You know, there's one thing there I'm struggling with, but good job. Every week. And you know what I'll do is I'll sit there and I'll read it about three or four times. Five times sometimes. <laughs> I don't read the critical stuff from other things, but I'll read, you read the positive over and over, you know. And then I'll take my nap, you know. It, for six years. Almost every week for six years, I've got that encouraging email. And he has no idea until I talked about him today that it means so much to me, and it has for six years. Look at this next verse. It's talking about assembly, assembling together as a church. And the writer says, this is, Hebrews is the salad book because it has all this lettuce. He says, let us all the time, let us. <laughs> he says, let us think of ways. Let us use our imagination. Let's sit around and think about this. Try to create, come up with some ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. That is so awesome. He says, take some time, put some thought into it. How can I, this assembly, encourage someone to live a life of love and good deeds? Anybody can criticize, find fault, find problems. Sit around and imagine. Do some homework. Try to think of ways where you can encourage, motivate one another. And then he says another salad verse. Let us. <laughs> let us not neglect our meeting together. We preachers sometimes use that to say, see, it says right here, don't miss church. But so much more I come to find out. In my journey, it tells me why. He says, do not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another. It tells us why we need to come. It's like the old illustration of the hot briquette. You take it out red hot, you get it away from the rest of them, it loses the fire. And God knows we human beings need to keep, we need, we're better together. We assemble together. We keep the fire going. Same in our small groups, in our ministries. When we do things together, we, we encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near, he says. Think of ways to encourage one another, to motivate one another, to live lives of love and good deeds. And when you assemble, you walk around, you're like that guy on Star Trek that goes around giving shots. You go around, you have the power to, to give encouragement. 
to your brothers and sisters. What an awesome verse. I need it. I need it. I need to give it. We have a sister named Dasu who's on the board. You can't do, I have these what I call pastoral hugs with women. I do a side hug usually, you know, try to. You can't do that with Dasu. You get a bear hug with Dasu. He does this. How are you? You've been doing that for six years. I just surrender, you know. And I walk away, wow, encouraged and loved. And, and, and I don't know what your gifts or how you need to do it. I'm not telling you to do it like I'm doing, but I'm saying you and I, all of us, are called by God to be encouragers. And when you give it, it's, it's powerful, you receive it. I need to say it, I need to give it, and I receive it. So encourage others daily. Next, encourage others spiritually. Encourage others spiritually. Good job on that project. Your house looks really nice. I love your haircut. Say I love your haircut even if you don't, because it'll take them six weeks to grow that thing out. (laughs) I love this verse. One of the things, this is Paul writing to the church at Rome. One of the things I always pray for is the opportunity, God willing, to come at last to see you. Do you see him oozing with relationships to these people, that church? Uh, To come at last to see you. For I long, strong word, I long to visit you so I can bring you some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. When we get together, I want to what? I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. See, it's reciprocal. It goes both ways. That's why I like having growth groups and discussion groups and having ministries and having things like Rock the Ridge where we can build one another up and encourage one another in our faith, remembering why we're doing what we're doing. Man, brother, I'm inspired by the way you love your wife. That's spiritual. It blesses me to see the love you have for your family. While your passion to invite people, others, to come to hope, it it, it inspires me. It makes me want to do the same thing and be like you. I love how you worship. You're so uninhibited in worship, and I want to be like that. It inspires me. Man, the way you pray, you pray the way it's meant to be prayed. Man, I'm so blessed by your generosity. Learn where we learn to encourage others spiritually. And, you know, you can make something normal spiritual when appropriate. Like, great game can become great game. You got a gift from God. Or congratulations on your promotion. Uh, You've been faithful in smaller things, and God has given you more. You can encourage someone who's hurting, not preach them down. Oh, sorry you have cancer. If you pray hard enough and really believe, maybe God will heal you. No, that's beating them up. Pray saying, I hate cancer. It's evil. It's not from God. I can't imagine, instead of saying, I understand how you feel, I can't imagine what you're going through, but I'm going to believe with you for your healing, and I'm going to pray for you. See, we can turn everyday things that we go through in life into spiritual things, spiritual encouragement, not hitting others, not shooting the wounded. I knew something was wrong. I knew you had some kind of problem, but lifting up people, giving people courage. Another, the last point is encourage yourself in the Lord. Did you know you can encourage yourself in the Lord? David, there was a time that David was massively distressed. People actually are wanting, they're talking about stoning him to death. I don't know about you. I have some bad days, but I don't know if people gathering together, let's stone him to death. You know, let's throw rocks at him. And uh, no, uh, it says here, But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You kind of, you rehearse the promises of God. One of my favorites, Jesus says, I am with you always to the very end of the age. If you're trying to accomplish the great commission, Matthew 28, I am with you always to the very end. When you think God's with you, you're like, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. God is with me. And you can claim those those verses about God's promises. Sometimes you've got to preach it yourself. You may say, well, I'm not a preacher. Well, get your preach on. Get your preach on and preach at yourself the promises of God. We've got a grandson named Ryder that uh, just really has faith in my heart. And uh, he uh, was going to kindergarten, was going to start kindergarten last year. Uh, He's getting ready to first grade now. But just before 
he started kindergarten at the end of the summer. He was riding his bike, learning how to ride it without the train wheels, and, and he was wa- real wobbly, and really, our son-in-law says, you, you all right? And he goes, I got this. I'm going to kindergarten. And he starts riding, and he takes off. So that's something we say all the time. I got this. I'm going to kindergarten, you know. That's preaching at yourself. I got this. God is with me. I got this. God is for me. If God is with me, who's against me? I got this. God can take everything, even negative things, mistakes, and somehow work them for the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I got this. My God will work it out. One of the things I like that we do in in our growth groups is we we write down prayer requests and I like to look back at those data and look back at them sometimes and you see wow God God answered that prayer you remember how God worked that out it's like a journal it's an encouragement file and keep your encouragements on file I keep cards sometimes for a long time that touch me and encourage me Um, save letters or texts or things so you remember that moment I'm excited that we're going to we're going to be a small part of blessing the Pearl Harbor commemoration. One of the things about Pearl Harbor is we were uh, surprised. Um, they thought by this surprise we're going to take them. And, but we, Americans don't lay down. Over and over in our history, we just don't lay down. We get back up. And, and uh, the next day, Franklin D. Roosevelt said December 7, 1941 is a date which will live in infamy. And uh, he's saying, we'll always remember how we were attacked. And uh, you go through history, we, when we've been attacked or we've gone through difficulties, the, our spirit is, we're not going to give up. And in fact, the, the, the quote about when we won our independence was that we kept losing battles until we won the war. <laughs> we just kept trying. We kept fighting. We wouldn't back down. And I love that. And I believe that's the exact kind of spirit that God calls his people spiritually as Christians. We get beat up. Things are attacking us every day in a fallen world, and God calls us to get back up and stay positive and be an encourager. You know, some of the most feared warriors of World War II were the kamikaze pilots. You know why? They were crazy! (laughs) They flew out uh, on these planes with not enough fuel to get back. They flew in our ships. They believed that they could hit the ships. They could do more damage than conventional warfare. They would yell as they left, Banzai, which means I'm ready to die for the emperor. And there was nothing we could do sometimes to stop them. But I think too many of us Christians are like the kamikaze pilot who flew 33 missions. (laughs) You're only supposed to have one. We say, oh, I'm saved forever. This is awesome. I got God as my father. I have brothers and sisters. Bonsai! Then we keep going back to the way our life was before, complaining, negative, critical. And I believe God calls us and he calls me. And listen, I'll tell you, I'm, a, I'm an encourager by nature. I got most inspirational in every sport I went out for, even swimming, and I never won. But I was the one that said, come on, we can do this. Let's go. It just... And, and I've noticed something that even though by nature I'm that way, I can get down. And I've noticed that when I'm critical or I straighten somebody out, I never feel good after it. I never feel good. But when I encourage someone, afterwards I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's like God knows what he's talking about. God made us. He wired us to stay positive, to get up every day, you know, and, and arrows are flying at us of negativity and discouragement. And he's calling us to go, Bazaar! Bazai! I love you. Hang in there, man. You're awesome. Don't give up. Get back up again. You got this. Bonsai! That's how he calls us, and that's how I want to go out. How about you? Yeah. Amen. Don't stay down. Let's help each other in this, and, and think about people that we can encourage, and I promise you, as you encourage, you'll be encouraged by the process, too, and you encourage me when you see me being uh, negative. Say, hey, quit, quit whining, Stan. Quit the whining. You got this, all right? Let's pray together. Father, I think it is so awesome that you created us to be positive. In our world, there's so much, there's a lot of cynicism, there's a lot of negativity uh, all around us. And when you think about it, Father, we, it's so easy to be that way. But yet you call us to stand out, to be light. And one of the most spiritual things we can do is be like you and encourage and give us an extra measure of strength this week to go out there in the battle 
and be encouragers, to be warriors. Help us to be the people that lift others up. Father, I pray that this church, when people come in here, they're blown away by how positive and how encouraging we are. So they go away changed and transformed. If there's someone here new to you, Lord, that hasn't crossed the line, pull them today by your love. Help them to know you love them so much you sent Jesus to die on the cross and help them to give their faith to you. And those of us who already have God, we commit right now. We commit to stay positive and to be encouragers. And may you get all the credit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and worship God. You know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So in all things, be my life and bread. I want, want you, want Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I. guys. Now it's time to pray for our offering. <laughs> I don't know. We could be a little more encouraging. Now it's time to pray for our offering. <laughs> Let's pray. You guys are encouraging. Father, we rejoice in giving. It's just a reflection. It's all yours anyway. It's a form of our worship, and we do it cheerfully. Father, you are so awesome. Please make us a force of hope on the ridge and beyond that brings you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, before we give, what is our purpose? Building relationships last forever. How do we do that? Love God, love people. So remember, every single day this week, in Christ, we always have hope. Thanks for being here, everybody.
have an awesome week.